Hey guys, today we'll be learning a very basic but an interesting topic that is human systems. How many systems are present in human body? How they all work together? How all the physiological activities are carried together in a human body? For that, first let us know what is human body. Human body is the structure of human being. It is constructed of different parts. All different parts come together and form a human body. So it is also called as complex entity. Now let's see how the system is formed. The first comes the cell. Cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. It is also called as building block of life. When a group of cells performing a specific function comes together, they form a tissue. So tissue is a group of cells arranged in close proximity performing a specific function. Now, when a group of tissues come together performing similar functions, they form an organ. So, organ is a group of tissues coming together performing specific or similar function. And when two or more organs performing a specific function for a body, they constitute a system. So, this is how a system is formed. Cell, tissues, tissue, organ, organ, system. Now, there are all together 11 systems present in human body. Let's take a brief look of each system. The first comes the nervous system. The nervous system controls the involuntary actions like breathing, digestion, excretion and voluntary actions or conscious movements like hi, hello, bye. All these actions are controlled by the nervous system. It also coordinates the sensory and the motor action by transmitting signals to and fro from different parts of the body. Now, let's take an example here, a person touching a flame. Now, a person is touching a flame. So, what happens? The sensory nerves send signal to brain that the flame is hot. And how the brain responds towards it? That by sending signal through motor nerve, telling hand to remove your hand, to remove it from there because the flame is hot. So, this is how the sensory and motor actions are controlled by the nervous system. Now, the nervous system is divided into central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system consists of nerves. The efferent nerves transporting signals from different parts of body to brain, while the efferent nerves transporting signals from brain to different parts of the body. The next system comes the endocrine system. Now there are various enzymes, hormones, chemical messengers secreted in the body by different glands. Now how the regulation of these hormones is maintained? When to secrete that hormone? When to stop its secretion? This all is controlled by the endocrine system with the help of nervous system. So the physiological activities of the body are together balanced by the endocrine system and the nervous system. Now there are two types of glands present in the endocrine system. First is the exocrine glands. These exocrine glands have ducts through which they release their hormones into the blood. While the endocrine glands are called the ductless glands because they don't have any specific duct. They directly release their hormones into the blood. So this was the endocrine system. The third system comes the respiratory system. The respiratory system helps with breathing, blood purification and gaseous exchange. It is divided into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract consists of nose, nasal cavity, pharynx and one third portion of the larynx that is up to the epiglottis. The epiglottis divides upper respiratory tract system and the lower respiratory tract system. The lower respiratory tract consists of two third portion of larynx, trachea, bronchioles, alveoli, ribs and diaphragm. So this together constitutes the lower respiratory tract. Now, the upper respiratory tract, what it does? It does the process of inhalation and exhalation. The O2 rich air is inhaled while the carbon dioxide rich air is expelled. So inhalation and ex exhalation is carried out by the upper respiratory system while the lower, lower respiratory system is responsible for the gaseous exchange. The alveoli puts oxygen into the blood capillary and the carbon dioxide present in the blood capillary is taken back into the alveoli and then exhaled out through upper respiratory tract.
so this was the respiratory system the next comes the cardiovascular system now the cardiovascular system is also called a circulatory system because it consists of heart and the blood vessels blood vessels include both arteries and veins what happens through veins all the deoxygenated blood is brought into the right side of the heart from where it is taken into lung for purification and from there it again enter into the left side of the heart through which it is pumped throughout the body so the blood vessels takes the blood throughout the body and provides nutritious nutritious things to the body so this was the cardiovascular system the next comes the digestive system now the digestive system is responsible for the ingestion of food its breakdown its assimilation absorption and its excretion so it is also called as excretory system now it consists of gastrointestinal tract and accessory digestive organs the gastrointestinal tract includes mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and anus while the accessory organs are uh, liver pancreas gall bladder salivary glands this by some or the other process helps in the process of digestion so they are called as accessory digestive organs the next system comes the renal system the renal system includes a pair of kidney a pair of ureter urinary bladder and urethra what happens here the blood is purified in the kidney so the waste material from the blood is filtered in kidney and the urine is formed there so urine is nothing but the waste material filtered out from the blood now this urine is transported from the ureter into the bladder and from there through urethra it is excreted out so the renal system is also called as the urinary system the next system comes the reproductive system now reproductive system is responsible for the continuation of the future generation it is responsible for the continuation of species now the female reproductive system includes fallopian tubes ovary uterus vagina cervix while the male reproductive system includes testis vas deferens prostate seminal vesicle penis and urethra now the gonads of reproductive system in males are testes which produce produce sperms while the gonads of female re reproductive system is ovary which produces ovum so this was all about reproductive system the next system comes the skeletal system now what is skeletal system skeletal system is the framework of human body now imagine a body without bones it will be flying it will not have any shape so what is skeletal system it is composed of around 270 bones at the time of birth and when there is growth the bones fuses with each other and during adulthood we have 206 bones now what is the important function of this skeletal system it provides support to the body it helps in the movement of the body it helps in storage of certain minerals the bone marrow produce various cells like rbcs and wbcs now the skeletal system is divided into axial skeletal and the appendicular skeletal the axial skeleton is the central part that is the skull the vertebrae the rib cage and the hyoid bone while the appendicular skeleton consists of the side part that is the shoulder girdle consisting of the bones of the upper limb and the pelvic girdle consisting the bones of the lower limbs so this was the skeletal system the next comes the muscular system now the same way we can't imagine a body without bones the same way we can't imagine a body without muscles just a skeleton how will look how dangerous and scary we will look so the muscular system permits the movement of the body maintains the posture of the body keep the body warm by preserving the heat loss and heat gain mechanism it circulates the blood throughout the body so when the muscles contracts the blood is pushed up so it helps in circulation of blood now there are three main types of muscles present in human body cardiac muscle the heart is made up of cardiac muscle skeletal muscles the muscles attached to the bones and smooth muscles the visceral organs are made up of smooth muscles so this was the muscular system the next comes the lymphatic system now the lymphatic system is also called as a part of circulatory system or the immune system 
Why? Because when the blood circulates through the tissues, some amount of it gets leaked out, which provides nutrient to these tissues and carries the waste material from there. Now this leaked fluid is drained into the lymphatic vessels from where the lymph nodes or the lymphoid organs trap the bacteria or any harmful substance and then the clear fluid which is called lymph again enters into the circulation. So this is how it does functions of both system, immune system and the circulatory system. So lymphatic system is also called as immune system or a part of circulatory system. The last system comes the integumentary system. Now how this integumentary system is formed? It consists of skin and its appendages. Now the appendages in skin are hair, nail, uh, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, sweat glands and many more. Now why it forms a system? Because it plays a very important role in protection, sensation, allows movement, endocrine part, excretion part and many more. So this was the integumentary system. Here we have taken a brief look towards each system and a short what are the functions of each system. In next video we will be studying detail of every system. Thank you guys. Keep learning. Keep growing.